Now, I won't have to freeze these because let's be honest, these are not gonna last long. Your girl likes her potatoes. Hello my honeys, it's Emmy. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Emmy. I'm a nutritionist and the creator of the Slim on Starch program where you work with me as well as a nutrition coach and a mindset coach so that you can thrive, lose weight, stop dieting, do whatever it is that you want to do on a plant-based, starch-based diet. Also, make sure that you hit subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified every time your girl, which is me, is coming out with a new video, which is every Wednesday and Catterday. Today, I'm going to be doing some food prep with you guys. I am feeling extremely grateful right now that the whole food prep situation for me is so straightforward and so easy because I have 10 zillion things to do today, which I am super grateful for to have a nice, full, abundant life, but it means that I don't have time to think about food. And I'm sure that you watching this video, you got a lot of stuff going on too. And the last thing that I want you to do is to spend all of this mental energy thinking about food. Food should be simple, it should be easy, it shouldn't be something that we give so much mental space to. But I find that with most people that come to work with me, that is the exact problem that we're facing. They say so much of my brain space is taken up by food. So I'm gonna show you guys what my food prep is going to look like for tonight's supper and for some more suppers later this week and just sort of talk about my philosophy as I do that. So what we got here are two of my favorite foods on the planet. We have some Japanese sweet potatoes as well as some gold potatoes. So my Hawaiian sweet potatoes are on their way. I just ordered another box. A lot of people have been asking me what size box I get. I get the 19 pound box and I like the big ones because I like to have a nice big potato. That's the, the size that I get. And you can get yours at hawaiiveggiefarm.com. The discount code is ME5. So if you want some Hawaiian sweet potatoes, then you can check those out. But today I have the Japanese sweet potatoes. This bag is from Trader Joe's and it was $3.99 for this bag and this is three pounds of Japanese sweet potatoes which is just awesome. They're called the Murasaki sweet potatoes which is very high class to call them Murasaki but they're Japanese sweet potatoes. If you go to Whole Foods you can also find Japanese sweet potatoes there and for my Aussies I used to find them at Kohl's and for the Aussies that want to find the Hawaiian sweet potatoes I would go to markets. If you live in Melb, where I lived, Paran Market has Hawaiian sweet potatoes. And then also I taught, I was a teacher in Australia, and I taught out in um, like near Tarni and near Hopper, Hopper's Crossing, that area. And there was a store, um, oh, what was the name of it? High Point, that's what it was, the High Point Shopping Center. They have a fruit and veg place which rocks. That place is amazing. And I have seen Hawaiian sweet potatoes there. So if you live in Melb, that's where you can get some. Um, but anyway, I have some Japanese sweet potatoes and then I have some gold potatoes. These are just from the local supermarket. Um, I'm really not fussy when it comes to supermarkets, so any place will do if you wanna get some gold potatoes. I really like the gold potatoes because they're a little bit more creamy, and the trick that I'm gonna show you today is gonna make them super, super yummy when you turn them into fries, which is what I like to do. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just wash all of these guys. So that's why I've got my strainer. So I'm gonna start by washing these. And I'm gonna be baking up all of these Japanese sweet potatoes. I'm not gonna be eating all of them tonight. Well, maybe I will, who knows? But it's not likely that I'm gonna be eating all of these tonight. But I'm going to bake up all of them because these guys freeze so well. And that is seriously one of my top tips when it comes to, you know, I, with the Hawaiian sweet potatoes, for example, you got this big 19 pound box of potatoes and then people say, well, what am I supposed to do with 19 pounds of potatoes? I say, eat them. And for me, I never have to freeze them, but they freeze beautifully. You don't want to freeze them raw though, okay? That is very important. Don't freeze your potatoes raw. Let me wash these and then we'll get back to this discussion. 
So don't freeze your potatoes raw. You want to freeze them after they have been cooked. So always make sure that you cook your potatoes <laughs> before you freeze them. So I'm gonna bake these guys all the way through and then once they're baked, I can either, oh, my pocket's coming out. Once they are fully baked, they can go into the freezer and you can either put them, you could just put them in one of these containers and put them right into the freezer and if the air gets on it, they're extremely forgiving. I mean, potatoes just simply rock, uh, but they're very, very forgiving in that if you put them in the freezer and the air gets on them, that's okay. They'll still be just fine. And then when you want to eat it, all you have to do is take them out of the freezer and then put them into the microwave and cook it for, you know, you'd have to feel it out, but maybe uh, even less than two minutes or so, you know, put it in there for about two minutes and it'll be good to go, good as new, as if it had just come out of the oven. So this is why I just, I love my potatoes so, so much because they're so forgiving and they travel well and they, they can stay in the freezer forever. They're just simply the best thing on earth. So I've just run these underwater um, and now I'm just brushing off any of the, the dirt and the gunk that's on there. You know, people's hands were on these potatoes and Lord knows where these people's hands was, especially when it comes in one of these bags, people can literally get their hands on it and that's just kind of nasty. And given the pandemic and you know, all that jazz, it, it really is best just to to always wash whatever it is that you are eating. So these are all dried and these are ready to go. So what I'm going to do is the oven is preheated and the oven is preheated to 450 right now. So I'm gonna take a cookie sheet and I have a sill pat on here. And all I'm going to do is take my taters. You can either put parchment paper down or the sill pat is great because it's reusable and you're saving the planet, honey, one sill pat at a time. You can also get these, like the sill pat one is like, I gotta be honest, it's pretty bougie. It's made in France. My mom had it and she gave it to me. That's the only reason why I have like the nice one. Otherwise I'd be getting the one from Amazon. It does the exact same thing. You can get it on Amazon for like 12 bucks, I wanna say. So I have my sill pot and I have my cookie sheet and I'm just gonna put these down. Now I used to be a tried and true wrap it in tin foil kind of gal, but I really am trying to reduce my waste as much as possible. That's what I love about the Hawaiian sweet potatoes is they come in a cardboard box and you can recycle that box and it's not using all of this plastic. So I really don't like how I have so much plastic when I get these guys. Um, but nonetheless, by not using the tin foil, you are reducing your waste and using this method is awesome blossom. So here's what I'm doing. I am laying them. I can hear my cats. I put the cats in my room while I filmed this video because they're kind of like, I don't want to brag, but my kittens are kind of obsessed with me and I can hear them wrestling right now upstairs. I put them upstairs because I knew I had to film this video and like they would be everywhere. So I'm going to put the Hawaiian or excuse me, the Japanese sweet potatoes onto the sill pot. And then I'm going to take a Pyrex bowl and what I'm going to do, I might have to rearrange these a little bit. <laughs> I'm on camera, so I'm a little bit nervous, but I need to put the Pyrex bowl over the potatoes so that they can bake. So I think I might be able to, man, nope, that didn't work. Okay, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of rearranging here. And what you wanna do is completely cover the potatoes. Yay, okay, so that worked. Yay, beautiful, okay. So you want these to be completely, there we go, good. Um, and what I'm gonna do here is the oven is preheated to 450. So now I'm gonna pop these into the oven and I'm gonna put them in for about 90 minutes or so, between an hour and 90 minutes. I think I will check them at an hour 15. And if the knife comes in and comes out very easily, I'm gonna take them out of the oven and then just put them here to sit. So that's how I'm gonna bake these guys. I mean. Could that be any easier? So I'm gonna put these guys in the oven. I'm gonna let them bake at 450 for about an hour, 15 minutes, take them out and then just leave them because when I leave them, they get nice and gooey and just so delicious. The way that I like to eat these is with cinnamon. So I like to cut them open, put cinnamon on it and honey, it's like eating French toast. It's the best thing on the planet. Now, 
I won't have to freeze these because let's be honest, these are not gonna last long. Your girl likes her potatoes, so these will be gone within the next day or two. By tomorrow, yeah, by tomorrow these will probably be gone. Maybe they'll make it to the next day depending on what else I eat. But I'm gonna have a few of these tonight for supper. And then the ones that I don't have, they're just gonna go in the fridge. I'm gonna put them into this container and they can stay uncovered in the fridge. So whatever ones I don't eat, well, all of them will go into this container. Tonight, I'm gonna eat some of them. And then the ones that I don't eat, I'm just gonna take this container, put it into the fridge and it can stay in the fridge. If it goes more than a couple of days, then you're gonna wanna put it into the freezer and it can stay uncovered in the freezer too. And then when you're ready, you just pop that sucker in the microwave. Now, I want to say that when you put that in the microwave, Wave, they heat up quickly. They're quite impressive, these little guys. So if you put it in the microwave after it's been in the fridge, after about a minute, it's gonna be good to go. If you leave it in there for like two minutes, honey, you're gonna have a hot potato on your hands. So let's go ahead and let's put this into the oven. All right, it's 3.30, so I'm gonna set an alarm for an hour and 15 minutes, which is really good timing because at five o'clock, it's a Monday, and at five o'clock, I always have my Q&A with my clients. So the timer for that is set. Now I'm going to get my potatoes started for me to have later tonight. So like I said, I have the gold potatoes. I love the gold potatoes because they're a little bit more creamy as opposed to white potatoes or russet potatoes, which are a little bit more starchy and they fall apart a bit, a bit more sandpapery while these are a bit more creamy. So what I'm gonna do with these guys is I love air fried potatoes. I just cut these suckers up, put them in the air fryer, press the French fry button, and it'll cook them uh, for about 20 to 25 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. If you don't have an air fryer, no problem. You can always use the oven and put these down on some parchment paper at about 450 um, for about 20 minutes and then flip them and then cook them for another 10 minutes. So I'm gonna wash these guys as well because even though they come in the bag and they say they're washed, honey, I don't trust everybody. So I'm gonna wash these guys. And then I'm not even gonna wipe them off because they're actually gonna go back into water, which I will discuss. Okay, so those have been washed. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these into fries. Now, this reminds me of my client, Kurt, who asked me, she said, you know, I have potatoes all the time. I'm always having air fried potatoes or baked potatoes. She goes, but I spend so much time cutting them. Do you have any tips for me? And honey, yes, I do. You know those apple cutters where you push down and it cuts it into an apple? You can use those for, for these, for fries. Um, so there's your little tip and you're welcome. That will be five bucks. Another thing that you can do is they actually sell French fry cutters for potatoes and they're, they're quite cool. Uh, they're, they're these really cool looking contraptions. I'll put a picture of one right here. So that's what it looks like. And I, they sell them on Amazon and I want to say they're only like 50 bucks or so. So if you're eating a lot of potatoes and you are not here for all the slicing and dicing, I hear you, honey. Just get yourself one of those. You know, it's a great anniversary gift. It's a great after Christmas gift. It's just a great, it's a great day for, it's okay, I don't know where I am or what I'm saying. So what I'm doing with these guys is I'm just cutting them up into fries and I'm putting them in, in this here container as you can see. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this container up with water. And this is a really cool trick. The reason that I do it is because the potatoes can sit in it during the day. And so, you know, it's 3.30 right now. I got my Q&A at five o'clock and then I have a, a good number of things to do before and after the Q&A. So I'll get off the Q&A maybe at six o'clock, let's say. And then I have some stuff that I've got to do, like edit this video. I just have a lot to do, <laughs> which I'm so happy about, but I do have a lot to do. And so I don't have time to be, you know, slaving in the kitchen tonight making my supper. And what's so awesome is that I don't have to do that. All I have to do is cut up my potatoes, I'll throw them in water, and then when I'm ready, I will throw these puppies into the air fryer and I'll be good to go. 
Um, that's my favorite part about this lifestyle is I am not the girl who's going to be slaving over recipes in the kitchen. I just like to keep it simple. Now, some people like to slave over recipes. You know, it's their creative art and they just really like to make recipes. And that's fabulous. A lot of my clients like to make recipes and that's why I have an entire Slim on Starch recipes book that they get. Uh, so if you like to make recipes, then by all means have your recipes. I am in the camp of like, just, oh, let's just keep it simple. I like everything in my life to be as simple as possible so that I can maximize brain space for the stuff that I actually care about. <laughs> I'm just not a recipe girl and I like to spend my energy with my clients, making YouTube videos, creating stuff for my program, improving the program, talking to clients. That is where I want to spend my energy and for that reason I make it so that everything else in my life takes as little brain space as possible. I wear the same thing. If I'm working, I will wear the same thing every day. I have seven different jumpsuits that I go between and that's that. That way I don't have to spend energy thinking about what it is that I'm wearing. The same thing with my food. I don't want to think about food. I don't want to have to plan out, oh, I'm having a recipe. Do I have this ingredient? Do I have that ingredient? That is so much brain space that I am not here for. And like I said, for some people, they do like it and that's awesome for them. I'm just not one of those people. I would so much rather just have things be so simple and not have to waste any brain space on it. This is something that I try to work with with my clients who have that same desire. My clients that like to make recipes, that's awesome too, honey, you make those recipes. But I like to just keep things simple so that I can use my brain space to think about other things and I don't have to think about food all the time. So today I am so grateful that I live this lifestyle because I have so many things to do and I just don't have time to think about food. So what I'm doing with these potatoes is I'm cutting them up into fries and I'm putting them into this container and I'm gonna need another container, so let me get one. All right, I've got this nice big bowl, so I'm actually gonna transfer some of these into here. And what I am doing is putting them into these containers, and then I'm gonna fill these containers with water. Now, some people do this for the culinary experience, because what happens is when you soak these guys in water, it removes the excess starch, and it makes it so that when you bake them or when you air fry them, they're actually nice and squishy on the inside, and they're not, you know, snappy fries, I guess you could say, um, but it, it makes for a very, very nice culinary experience and it improves the texture of the fries when they are air fried. So they don't dry out, they retain moisture when you do this. So this is a tip that I actually got from my brother. My brother is just very talented in the kitchen and this is what he recommended doing. And so I started to do this and what was so, so convenient about it was that it saved me so much time because I didn't have to plan out, oh, I, I have to cut my potatoes and then I have to put them in the air fryer right away, otherwise they'll go brown and you know, that whole thing. And what I used to do was I would cut up my potatoes when I was a teacher, I would cut up my potatoes before school and then I would, cause I commuted when I lived in Boston and worked in Boston before I moved to Australia, I had, I had a very long commute to work and sometimes it would take me almost two hours to get home from work and I couldn't leave until four o'clock so I wouldn't get home until like six o'clock. No. But what I would do is I would cut up my potatoes before school and that way when I got home all I had to do was throw them in the air fryer or put them into the oven because they had been resting in the water all day long. Now as far as how long can they rest in the water for? I wouldn't have them rest in the water for more than a day. I think that you're, you know, then you start to get into uh, some stuff, some bacteria might start growing. So if you do want to make it so that you can, you know, prep potatoes ahead of time, I would just go with cooking them ahead of time and then you can freeze them. Potatoes are so forgiving once they've been frozen, but I wouldn't let them rest in water for more than a day because then, you know, maybe some bacteria would start to grow and that's nasty, honey. We don't want you to be eating any bacteria. So I'm just gonna finish cutting these guys up and then um, I'll tell you what I do next.
Okay, so I have my potatoes all cut up and now I'm going to fill these up with water and I'm just gonna do like cold water, room temperature water. I don't wanna do hot water because that seems a little bit, I don't know, that kind of freaks me out. Hot water, bacteria. So I'm just gonna do like lukewarm, room temperature, kind of cool water and I'm gonna let these guys sit. All right, my honeys, so I have got my potatoes that are resting in the water. My Japanese sweet potatoes are in the oven. And then when these guys come out, how am I gonna be eating them? Well, you know how I like to eat my air fried potatoes. So I'm gonna take the gold potatoes, put them in the air fryer, and I'll let them cook in there at 400 for about 20 to 25 minutes. I just press the French fry button and that's what it goes at. And then for the Japanese sweet potatoes, I'm gonna have those with cinnamon. But the way that I like to eat the potatoes is I wrap them in lettuce. So I take lettuce and you sort of make it into like a taco where the lettuce is on the outside and the potatoes on the inside. If you haven't tried it yet, don't knock it until you try it. The contrast between the crisp lettuce and then the softness and the warmth of the potato together is like 11 out of 10 culinary experience from the girl that eats potatoes as a meal but this is a very well-rounded meal believe it or not because potatoes contain all of the vitamins and minerals and nutrients that you need to survive the exception of vitamin d and vitamin b12 so so long as you're supplementing those you're getting vitamin d from the sun and you're getting your vitamin b12 from a supplement you could actually live off of potatoes alone which a lot of people don't realize but potatoes are king i love potatoes i eat more potatoes than any other human on earth and that i am confident in so i'm gonna enjoy these potatoes potatoes and I love you honeys. Any video requests, leave them in the down bar. And the secret word for today, if you made it to this point in the video, is potato. Of course, so comment potato. If you want to work with me, go to healthyemmy.org slash apply and I would love to hear from you. I love you honeys and I'll see you in my next video. Woo!